Alright, how's it going guys? Today we are back with another car information video. And today we're going to be reviewing my 2008 Civic Si 8th generation coupe. So I've owned this car for about a year, just under a year and a half. And it's been a great, reliable, fun to drive car. And I really, and I've, and I've really enjoyed my time so far with it. And because this video is not going to only be your view, but it's going to be your owner's perspective, things that I've noticed, things that I've seen throughout the car that you wouldn't notice maybe on your first test drive or things you wouldn't notice in the first month because I wanted to really understand this car before I reviewed it. So to start off with the interior, we got the bucket seats. They're very nice. They have the aggressive side bolsters, but again, they are very, very soft. I've mentioned this many times in my videos. Uh, very, very comfortable. They hold you in very well, and they're probably one of the best seats I've owned in my car, at least. And in fact, they actually are the best seats that I've ever owned. Another awesome part of the interior is the gauge cluster and heads up display. So right in front of the steering wheel, you have the RPM gauge. Nothing too fancy, but it's right in the middle. I like that a lot. But up top is where it's awesome. You have the heads-up display where you have the, the speedometer in the middle, temp gauge on the left, fuel gauge on the right. And beside the speedometer, you even have a shift light that goes off when you're nearing red light. And I really love that Honda put this in their car at this price point. I've said it before and I'll say it again. At, the, at this price point, the interior is perfect. Um, there's nothing really more you could ask for. You have your auxiliaries, you have so many plugins, so many power points. You have the heads up display. You have the really nice seats. The only th actually, the one thing that it probably is missing is heated seats. If you guys didn't know, this, this the Civic SIs don't have heated seats for some reason. I don't know why my Prelude had heated seats. As for the transmission, it has a six speed, a buttery smooth six speed transmission. Uh, I've had no problems with this so far. I know a lot of people actually do get the third gear lockout of the third gear synchro issues. So far, mine has been perfect. I've had no issues. Um, I know that's a very common thing. So if you're test driving one, make sure you make sure there's no uh, third gear synchro issues. That's the main gear that actually gets the issues. So play around with it, make sure you're shifting in th third a lot. So as for the six speed though, it's really great. Uh, it gets really, really great fuel mileage. The gearing ratio is good for what it is. Uh, you can obviously add short shifting kits and stuff. Uh, personally, I just have a, a Skunk 2 weighted shift knob. I did this because I know the, the added weight of the shift knob makes it easier to put your car into gear, which can actually fight off those sinker issues that I talked about before. And under the hood, we have a two liter VTEC engine. It is putting out 139 foot pounds of torque and 198 horsepower, which does not sound like a lot, but for the weight and the fact that it has VTEC, it is actually enough. It is, it is, it is enough for what it is. Just the fact that it has VTEC makes it a lot more fun than it would sound, because 198 horsepower, I mean, that's decent for what it is, but 139 foot pound of torque, are you serious? No, it's actually not too bad with the the weight of the car, you know, it's fun to throw around. It's super light on its feet. For the wheels, as you can see, I have the stock wheels in the front. And on the back, I actually have some Koenigs paired up with some Pilot Sport AS3s, I think, AS3 Plus. I just had some issues with my other set, uh, the other two pairs of snow tires, and it's been snowing a lot, even though it doesn't look like it. So I had to throw on some snow tires on the front, and I thought it'd be better to do that than to have my summers on all four and to crash. And keep in mind, this car is completely stock other than the rims and you know the weighted shift knob and obviously the JDM emblems. I'm gonna get into modding soon, but for the time being, I've been working on you know some aesthetic stuff, you know, the rims and wheels. In my opinion, the rims and wheels are the most important mod you should be getting. So I focus on the rims and wheels this summer, um, the weighted shift knob, and obviously I'm gonna get into some Han data. Uh, Air intakes, exhaust, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. And if you guys have any mod suggestions, definitely comment down below, I would love to hear them. Let's get into the review. Also, I thought I'd mention that the back seats, um, they're unusable. I mean, if you have some friends that you don't like, you can probably throw them back here. No, but for real, I mean, if you, if you really need to use them, I'm sure they can last, but they're not gonna be very comfortable for adults. Maybe children would be fine. They kind of remind me of like the FRS BRZ where they're just there to be there. All right guys, and I also forgot to mention, I actually picked up a GoPro Hero 5 Black on Boxing Day. I don't know if you noticed that in my last video, but I thought it'd be cool to get, you know, that point of view shot for my videos so I don't have to use my phone anymore. So hopefully it improves the video quality. So yeah, I'll, I'll start this video off talking about one of the main aspects that drew me into buying this car, which is the Honda reliability. This car has been nothing but perfect for reliability. Um, you can really, I don't beat on my cars, but this is the type of car that you can beat on over and over and over again. 
and it's still gonna turn on the next morning, no problem. And that's one thing I really love about this car. Even though I don't beat on it myself, I just love the fact that, you know, it's, it was engineered so well to handle the abuse, because let's be honest, it's, it's a fun to drive sports car, and people are gonna abuse it. So I really love the fact that Honda took that to heart and created a car that could be driven hard and not blow up like my WRX. No, but for real, and that really ties into the fun factor. I talked about this in one of my last videos, is that, is that when you can beat on a car over and over again, you don't have to worry about it blowing up. It's, it really makes it fun to drive, um, especially when it's, you know, it's, it's sports. So this car has uh, just under, I'll, I'll just say, this car has 200 horsepower and 140 foot pound of torque. You know, that does not sound like a lot. Okay, what's this happening there? That does not sound like a lot. In fact, it's not a lot, I'll be honest. It's, it, that's not a lot of power. Um, it's basically just a regular Civic with, with extra juice and obviously better suspension and there's many components, differences. It's basically just a regular Civic with some extra juice, which is fine, because you know, for the price point and what you're getting with this car, I do think it is a bargain. And we'll actually hit VTEC right now, why not? So one, one comparison I'll make with this car is it kind of reminds me of the BRZ FRS and don't get me wrong, obviously I know they're two completely different cars, but in terms of power and that lightweight form factor, they are kind of similar. But the one way that the Civic Si has an advantage over the BRZ or FRS is the fact that it does have that VTEC. That extra VTEC makes it a lot more fun to drive. Um, it's a lot more enjoyable, you know, it's more dramatic, you have some more fun. Where the BRZ FRS doesn't have that. If this car didn't have VTEC, it would be a lot less fun to drive, but you know it does, so. But it definitely is a blast to hit VTEC every now and then. I don't, I don't, I try not to hit it a lot, but when I do, I hit it hard. And you know what, I'll actually hit VTEC again, because I am tr I think there must be a new development, I actually have been over here. All right guys, we'll hit VTEC one more time. Man, if you haven't if you haven't driven in a car with VTEC and you haven't hit VTEC, I will say it is completely different than hitting than having a turbo and then having all these extra things. It's it's a really unique experience and it's honestly it's such a blast. This car is just for the value, for the price point you can pick up, pick up an 8th gen car, it is it has so much value. They're super good on gas, they're, they're a blast to drive, you can just beat on them. Not only that, there's a really strong aftermarket, so if you're one of those persons that likes to tinker with the cars, you know, throw in an air take, uh, do some coils, do some wheels, um, this car has it all. This car has a lot of value for what you're getting. And one of the only downfalls is that it, it is front wheel drive. Um, which a lot of people see as a negative, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. It handles really, really well for what it is, and honestly, it's just a blast. Some of the main takeaways from this car is that, you know, it has a really good interior. If you're one of those people that want a nice interior, it has a decent interior for the price point with the heads-up display, with the nice seats, with the nice shifter. Um, it's super reliable, super good on gas. For gas, I actually get about 700 kilometers on the highway. Uh, 450 to 500 kilometers per tank in the city and that is decently well it's really good that's actually really good for being a fun to car fun to drive car reliability you know I, I've said it and I really like to emphasize it because I think it is one of the main components if you're looking to buy a Civic is the reliability you can really beat on this car and it's definitely not gonna beat you back which is so nice um, when I had a Subaru you know I didn't have that feeling I, I felt like if I if I drove my car and I tried and I beat on it, even though I don't beat on my cars, so don't get me wrong, that it was gonna hate me back, <laughs> and it actually did in return because my engine blew up. Taking a car on these bends, this car handles really well too. Um, this is obviously obviously on winter tires and stock suspension, and it handles really well. So I am very very excited to put some coils on this car, you know, to really modify it, make it my own. Because um, it's gonna be a blast to drive. All right, guys. And end off this video, I like to add this into my reviews, and it's basically what type of person would I see buying a blank car? And for this example, the Honda Civic Si HN. 
So as for myself, I am currently in university. Well, I actually just got a job for next semester, which is great. But I'm currently in university. Uh, I see this car as a great starter fun car, fun car to drive. I see this car for a student who who, want, who needs. I see this car for a student who needs really good reliability, who needs really good practicality with the gas mileage, and small form factor, and cheap maintenance. But I also see this car as a way to enter the car world because you know there's so much aftermarket support and so many things you can do. This car to customize as your own which is why they become one of the most popular cars in the world. And for the overall price point of this car, it's just it's just very, very, very good. Now obviously it is no WRX, it is no FRS, it is no in input this car. It, it is a really great Honda, it's a really great package for what you're getting. And I would definitely recommend this to anybody who wants that fun to drive car, but it doesn't necessarily want to worry about reliability or things like that or fuel mileage. I would say if you're someone who's more power hungry and you have a bigger budget to fix your cars and you're really good with cars and you're not so worried about gas mileage, then go and get the WRX or go get another turbo car. But if you are somebody who's more conscious about you know reliability and fuel mileage and all that stuff, I would definitely recommend this car because it, it really fulfills all those needs and is a great complete package. Now, for what have I noticed about this car? Um, I've noticed the great fuel economy, obviously the good reliability, but I have noticed that over time, you do want more power. With with this type of car, just like an FRS, this is why it really reminds me of our FRS BRZ and all the things I've heard about those cars, is is yeah, the power is good, It's it's you can really use the full potential of the car, you know, for all those reasons, it, it's good. But it does leave you wanting more power, um, and I am, definitely feeling that right now uh, I, I'm definitely okay with the power it does have you know it's fun to drive with the VTEC and going up to 8,000 rpm but I do find myself thinking to myself wow I wish I I wish this thing had a little bit more power you know and that's where the ninth gen came into play it gave it more torque um, give it a bit more power that way but that's where the aftermarket's there if you get Honda and you do your bolt-ons um, you get your tune this car will be completely changed um, and I'm very excited to go down that route but anyways guys to summarize this video uh, hopefully it's probably all over the place and I hope you forgive me but basically it is reliable it is fun to drive it's good on gas practical and for the value, it is honestly one of the best cars you can get at this price point. But anyways guys, I really appreciate all the support recently. We're obviously at 1,000 subscribers, which is so cool. I obviously don't make videos to make money. I do this for fun and I really enjoy, you know, connecting with you guys, making videos that people will actually use to help them. And I really, really, really enjoy all the awesome feedback and comments I've been getting recently. And I really appreciate it. With that being said, I think I talked about this in a previous video as I actually recently just got monetized. Um, and again, I'm not here for the money, but I do think it's really awesome because it's gonna give me more opportunity to purchase more aftermarket parts, you know, to purchase more equipment like this GoPro I just got. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. I really appreciate all the support, guys. Thanks for watching.